Welcome back to your weekly dose of information that you could go your whole life not knowing. Oh, I disagree. Hello, academic cryptids. I guess I would consider myself an academic cryptid. I know I do. I don't know if I ever thought of myself like that. What cryptid would you be? Well, not Bigfoot, because I have like the smallest feet known to mankind. It's not about physical appearances. It's about Mm. who you relate to. Like my aesthetic? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't... I don't know the full list. Any... Any folklore I don't know I feel like I could pull off being a vampire I feel like I vibe with that but also I hate night is it is va- are vampires a cryptid I don't know I feel that's what cryptids I just said are like I don't from know like the list. okay the yeti the abominable snow why I don't know I, I would be the mothman person. I'd absolutely be mothman and why such confidence in that answer have you seen that man's butt uh <laughs> There's just okay. There's Got a lot so, of junk in the there's trunk. There's so much um, background that if you don't know anything about, do you know anything about Mothman? Not enough. Okay. Well, there's a statue of Not Mothman. Not enough to know the significance of his butt. There's a statue of Mothman in this like little tiny town that is like they are known for Mothman sightings, and that's like all they do. So there's a statue of Mothman. And he has a big butt. It's very sculpted. Mm, a but I also just love the figure. like all of the mystery that surrounds him, but only in this one little town. I love it. I love well, fair it. Fair enough. So there you have it. Yeah. Yeti and the Mothman. Yeah. Mothwoman. Nice. I think nice. we should. Either one is fine. All right. Fair enough. Now, I am very sorry that Maddie didn't really seem to know what cryptids are, but I also have some other things that I need to apologize for. Of course. From your last episode. So first, I would really like to apologize for Maddie giving you such a short episode. I mean, it was basically a mini-sode. You're welcome. I would also very really like to apologize for the absolute lack of scandal and shock uh, that our episodes normally have um, right. that was instead replaced with white noise. Hmm. But I get it now. She gets it now. I get the joke now. Yeah. Because we're white. And we make noise. And we make noise. Yes. It's, a, it's genius. <laughs> it really. was right, right in front of you. It, it was. It was too good. I couldn't even, mm. couldn't even process it. It was too, like, highbrow. Yeah. I suppose. Well, I mean, I'd just like to say, I think they pro- our, our fans probably appreciate, or watchers, viewers, whatever you guys want to call yourselves. Listeners. This is our a academic cryptids. This is, this is a podcast. They're listeners. Our cryptids are probably thankful. I will accept that. I will accept calling them cryptids. That we had a shorter episode. We have been bombarding them with long episodes. They have been so long it was, episodes. It was honestly, I, I, I will was admit trying that. to sacrifice a little bit of my pride to keep the episode oh. short. And I mean, the scandal. Okay. I mean, okay. Mary was a woman, okay. arch- a female okay. architect. Okay. That's scandalous. Okay. Now, yes, there have been some long episodes. More than we normally like to put in a row. I think you went a little too far to the other side of the scale, so I'm gonna try to bring us back to the middle today. Even it out. Will I do it? Will this episode not be an hour long? I'm gonna try. Oh gosh. And I think I did it. I think it's gonna be okay. Thirty-five minutes. Well, let's put her to minutes, the test, maybe. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, because we all know how I get way too into things. That's almost like I started a podcast about that. I don't know. Wow, you should um, you should start a podcast about that about like things that I get really too like yeah, too like into do, like, like and how you dives. do deep dives yeah. and you kind of like hyper focus. No way. I, on it. I don't know. I don't that, know. That I don't, could be a good name. I don't know. I, I, it probably um, wouldn't do well though. I don't think so. I I don't think it would. Well, back to the podcast we have now. Um, what do you have? So tell us. So what do you so, have? Let's yeah. start the timer. Here we go. Let's see if she can do it. Well, I'm not gonna rush it. I'm just so I will say I had this planned before we recorded your last episode uh, and we recorded these very close together because we're going to have a busy week and we just need to get has, ahead of schedule. So I didn't have time to change it. Okay. So, okay. So why does it matter that you didn't change it? It's not particularly 
scandalous? exactly the same. Okay. No, 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 no. It's very oh, scandalous. Okay, good. It's very scandalous. But we're getting another life and career of a successful woman story okay. today. Will we, we ever do all, one about I'm a man? I don't know. <laughs> well, Their I mean, stories I'mo. are always told, so it's fine. Imo. Technically. <laughs> what do what do we classify Imo as? Is he I man? Think, I think a life and career of a successful man. Man or Muppet? Man is the question. <laughs> I was going to say man or cryptid, but that too. Or man or cryptid. Man, cryptid, Muppet. Where would you catify? <laughs> catify? How would you categorize? You, know, you, could, you could have a, per- a perfect personality triangle with that. Yeah. Man. Muppet and cryptid. cryptid. <laughs> I'm, that is a great I'm one. I'm between Muppet and cryptid, but closer to cryptid for sure. Who needs dark empath when you have this this triangle here? (laughs) Like, what the heck? You don't. All right, so so who do we have? So today, I want to tell you about the absolutely crazy, scandalous life of Mary Shelley. I love this girl. Do you know her story? Not, I mean, somewhat. Okay. I will say, I I hate Frankenstein. Get off of my podcast. So much, guys. Why? I can't. I think I read it too young, and I didn't have a teacher to help me understand the depth of it. And did I you can't. Read it? I think like sixth grade. Oh, really? Like That's it early. was. It was young, and so I know it's. I mean, I it's respect it. It's a hard read it. for a sixth grader. I respect yeah. it. I'm not. No, I love Mary Shelley as a person, but the Frankenstein. I just have always. I I can't get over that. Did you read it again after that, in college? I read it in one of our classes, mm-hmm. and I, I thought so. It just. I just still couldn't get over it. I think it's almost like But this. you did reread it, and you yeah. still couldn't get past it. It was better the second time around. It definitely was. But it, I respect it for what it did for the sci-fi genre. She's an incredible woman. Story's great. Like, pretty lethal. She's stellar, but... It's so much more than sci-fi. Maybe we'll have a conversation. We're not even really going to get into that. That's what I'm saying. We'll do that another I time. Had to, I had to put it out there that it's so much more than sci-fi. Well... I, ho- I hope it is, and I'll maybe I'll try to reread it again. Third time's Third the charm. Time. <laughs> yep. All right, so Mary Shelley, give it to me. So if I had to describe her in one word, it would probably be metal. She is like... I like it. Yeah. I vibe with that. Now, also, there's a lot of tragedy. She's has done a lot of things not great as well, but just crazy. Love it. Like, I'm obsessed yeah. with this story. I think I'm having some flashbacks. I feel like I, I have like a few bits and pieces. You were not in my class. No. Right. No, I, was in, I was I yep. was abroad. That's right. I was across the pond. I led the discussion on this. Oh, on so this you're book. you're ready. I I didn't cover uh like n- anywhere near it this in depth. Sure. Um, but I had a couple little factoids that I oh, put that in. Word. That is a great word. I'm sorry. I'm done interrupting. Go. Mary also, Shelley. my professor doesn't know that I like shared a lot of those with the class because he wasn't there that day and he just like put me in charge and he had me send him his notes at, or send him my notes and I left out some of the more scandalous ones. Um, even though it literally, he would have loved it if I did. I don't know why I took it out. So before we get started, I do want to just have a, say something a little more serious um, just a trigger warning. We are going to be talking about suicide. It's not going to be very in depth. It's more of the factual events of what happened. Mm. Um, but if you or anyone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800 273 8255. So just want to put that out there before we get into it. Thank you, Rachel. You're very welcome. So, born Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin That's what it was. on August 30th, 1797, in Somerstown, London, to parents Mary Wollstonecraft and William Godwin, the woman who would become Mary Shelley, was born. I love Mary Wollstonecraft. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I love that they're related. That makes it even better. It's, yes, it's her mother. So her father, William Godwin, was a philosopher and a political writer. Her mother was a famous feminist who wrote Vindication of the Rights of Woman, which we have both read. You read it, right? You oh, of that course one? I've okay, read good. it. Okay, good. Of course I've read so, that Oh, yes. Um, that's, they like, were... that's like the canon 
of feminist writings. <laughs> it's in the canon of feminist writings. So they were both considered pretty radical and like out there with their beliefs. So you know this is going to be a good origin story. Like you know she is not going to be the typical 18th and 19th century no. discreet, Housewife. calm, quiet woman, which yeah. I still think is a stereotype that wasn't always true. Very true. True less mm-hmm. often than you think. Mm-hmm. But anyway, now Mary Shelley never really knew her mother. She died um, just days after giving mm-hmm. birth to Mary. So she was left in the care of her father along with her older half-sister, who was named Fanny Imlay, um, who was uh, her mother's child from an affair that she had with soldier Gilbert Imlay. Gilbert. Gilbert. It's a great name. It's a really good name. So we already have a difficult family dynamic here. Mm. A mother who has died, a half-sister from an affair, and now she's living with her half-sister and her father. Right. Now, to make it even more complicated, her father remarried in 1801, when Mary was only four years old, Aww. to Mary Jane Claremont. Lots of Marys. Oh, it's it gets so confusing. So I'm, many Marys. Uh, yeah. I, some of honestly, some of the names of people I just avoid, and I'm like, <laughs> I only refer to them in. I'm only going to refer. For, bleh, I'm only going to refer to them by their relation Fair to enough. Mary Shelley because everyone is freaking named Mary or Percy. So Claremont, her stepmother, had two previous children. I believe they were both from two separate men, actually. Mm. And later, Claremont and Godwin had another child. Mary never really got along with her stepmother. Um, and later in life, it does seem that maybe she was using kind of some inflammatory language to explain yeah. some of the things that happened. Like maybe her stepmother wasn't quite as bad, but mm. yeah. there was still a lot, of, a lot of stuff that was not good between them that uh, her stepmother did poorly. But one example of her not parenting very well, mm. parenting Mary very well, um, is that she decided to have Shelley's, well, she's not Shelley yet, so we'll call her Mary, decided to have Mary's stepsister educated, but not Mary. She just kind of felt like it wasn't necessary. Did you see me prepare to start say that word? I was like... Uh, no, I didn't see that. I just um, saw... I was trying, I had to hold it back, but I thought a very <laughs> nasty word. So Mary, however, wanted to be educated and found solace in books from a very young age, which... I feel like it's just so the opposite of most kids. Most yes. kids are forced to be educated and they don't want it. Yeah. So she would frequently read her father's books and they often had notable scholars in the home um, like Samuel Taylor Coleridge. It's Coleridge, right? Not Coleridge. I've heard it both ways. Really? Okay. To be honest. And William Wordsworth. Nice. They obviously had a very intellectual home, very intellectual parents, um, very intellectual home life. So it wasn't hard for her to come into contact with you know, these intellectual conversations and education and all of that um, at all. But once she did, she largely had to learn those things on her own Hmm. as opposed to her siblings who were actually getting an education. Right. Who says you need traditional education? Not me. Not me either. I don't say that. I don't say that. Not me either. (laughs) Make your own freaking destiny. Well, destiny and education aren't necessarily one and the same, but... She just likes to rain on my parade. All the time. I like to make sure that things are correct. There she is again. (laughs) She just proved my point. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing. So she began writing from a very, very young age, despite not having any formal education. And she actually published her first poem in 1807 at the age of 11. Wow. Mm -hmm. Go off, sis. And she said about her affinity for writing, quote, As a child, I scribbled, and my favorite pastime during the hours given to me for recreation was to write stories. From a very young age. That's what she wanted to do in her free time. That's so sweet. Let me know if you think this next statement is sweet or weird. Mm -hmm. One of her favorite places to read was at her mother's grave. That one's not not that weird, but it's going to get there. I'm I'm sure it is. It's going to get there. But I mean, how are you going to keep the child of William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft away from education? Like, she had to know that wasn't going to end well. Just putting that out there. Um, But in general, she spent a ton of time at her mother's grave and is said to actually have learned how to write by tracing the letters on her mother's grave. Well, her mother's last name has like a million letters. So (laughs) hey, there you go. That's almost the whole alphabet. Yeah. So that was her favorite place to hang out as a child. And there's a decent amount of evidence that she lost her virginity on her mother's grave. (gasps) That whole that whole thought 
really irks me. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not like directly on top, well, but yeah, like I next mean, to it, oh. like right there. It's also probable that her sister was there at the time. But oh well, my gosh. Or her half sister, but that's um, another, t- another story for another time. Oh boy. So as Mary is growing up and coming into her own, um, she begins to resemble her mother in more ways than one physically and she's you know very very intelligent and mm-hmm. writing and all of those things um but her her stepmother mary jane is probably starting to feel a bit threatened by this mm. a bit jealous of the amount of attention um right. of her husband that mary is getting but also the other way around too like mary is also jealous of yeah. mary jane's the attention that mary jane is getting um and this may be why mary was sent to scotland in uh, June of 1812. Of course, Mary sent to Scotland. Yeah. I love it. Mary and Scotland just go together. They do. Also, po- fun fact, I when I went to Scotland, they have this crazy restaurant there. Okay. Called like the Frankenstein House or something, but it feels like you're at like a rainforest cafe or something. Because <laughs> you're like... But is it, is it Frankenstein themed? Yeah. It's like you walk... Oh my gosh, you'd love it. Um, You'd like walk in... Where in Scotland? It, Edinburgh. No, I'm not even kidding. I went into it just being like, oh, yeah, we should just go see that. Like, it's Frankenstein Cafe or whatever. I don't even know. I don't remember what it's called. I'm not even kidding. It looks like a Disney World restaurant. It literally looks like some crazy Disney World or, like, what is it, Downtown Disney, like, Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex kind of thing. Because they have, like, animatronics. Jurassic Fork. Yeah. Every once in a while, it'll, like, things will start moving, and you'll hear Frankenstein. He's like, Brrr. Is this the animatronic Frankenstein? Yeah. And then, and then he'll literally go, like, Brrr. <laughs> and they just have noises and things like screaming. It's like total mad scientist lab vibes. I adore it. Like the, what is it, 1930s the menu. I'll order version ahead. of uh, that 1930s version of the movie. That's what it feels like. Can we get, um, can we Uber Eats this? <laughs> Who's going to be our Uber from Scotland? If you're listening to this from Scotland, let us know. Or eat there like, on our behalf. Send us pictures, please. Straight up, I'm about to buy a flight just to go here, and then I'll come right back home. Sounds like a plan. Go for the 4th of July. Just knock <laughs> yourself out. Just, like, just go by myself. It's Independence Day for America, but no, we're going <laughs> to Scotland. It's also Independence Day for Rachel to travel alone, to just go to eat a single Europe meal to by myself, meal. by myself in Scotland, and then come back. I've heard crazier ideas. Imagine just eating alone in that restaurant. That was- <laughs> Like, imagine like ultimate being... sign of like <laughs> red flag. Like it's all, ultimate it's, a, it's red a massive flag. red flag, but it's also a massive power move. And probably yeah, that's some, true. Probably something I would do. Yeah. But, but like, imagine getting like stood up there. <laughs> it's like I have a great place for us to go grab dinner, and you're sitting there like, oh my god. No, but literally, if a man <laughs> took me there on a first date, he'd be the one. Yeah. Boys, take <laughs> he'd notes. Be the one. Oh my so, gosh. anyways, we're in Scotland now. Sorry, had to throw that in there. Thank you. You're welcome. That, that's very important to me. I thought you might like it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, <laughs> Mary was sent to Scotland. Um, and uh, a lot of people believe that that was just her mother, like her stepmother, just like, shipping her off, mm-hmm. um, even though it was apparently for Mary's health. Mm. What do we believe? For her air quotes. health. Air, air Maddie's quotes. doing air quotes. Now, upon one of her visits home to London in 1812, she met Percy Bish Shelley. Bish. Yeah, I Bish. still don't believe it's pronounced that way. That's oh. how I've heard it pronounced so many times. I still don't believe it. I love it. That's what we're going with. Now, Percy was married to Harriet Westbrook, and they had a young child. Two years later, however, in 1814, his marriage was troubled mm. and tumultuous, and Mary and Percy began a courtship. Oh. Not, I, he's still married. I know. I say ah uh, because I know they end up together and they're like kind of a power couple. But it's also like oh, uh, because you're like it gets more awful. like that. It gets a lot. It gets a lot worse. Yeah, I, I I actually I remember just being told that their whole relationship was like very very scandy. Mm-hmm. Let's get ready. Let's get into it. So here it goes ruining my. Honestly, I can't aw. even fit all the details into a podcast. So. That's fine. Let's do We're it. hitting the big ones. Hit the big points. So they eloped in July of 1814. Still married? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, when Mary was 16, 
Um, but they obviously they can't legally get married because mm-hmm. of Harriet. Mm-hmm. And her, uh, Mary's father refused to speak to her for a while because he was not psyched about this. But Percy and Mary fled to England and they traveled around Europe for a while. I said fled to England. Yeah. They were already where are we fleeing? I forget to? where they were where they were at this point. But they fleed. It had. That was a joke on purpose, guys. <laughs> Maybe I just mistyped that. Uh, okay, but. We'll just maybe they fled just gonna from say, just England. Gonna say, it has to be right. We're just going to say he they fled. So Mary and Percy fled, and they traveled around Europe for a while, um, and then they had a baby girl in February of 1815. But unfortunately, she died right. a few days after being born. Sad. And then in January of 1816, Mary gave birth to a son. What was his name? Uh, William. William, Mary, and Percy. We have consistency in this timeline. We do. We do. Awesome. So I'm not going to get into it too much because there's just a bunch of differing accounts and sure. a lot of it is gossip and rumor, but it does seem that a lot of it is true, but everyone tells it differently. But there were probably some love triangles. There were definitely some other affairs. There was possibly this like weird intimacy between Percy and... Mary's half sister, mm. not necessarily like ne- not necessarily like sexual or like mm. a physical relationship, but there was like something weird going so on. So they had like an unofficially open relationship. Yeah, you could you could probably call it that. Okay, I don't I don't know that it was yeah. um, what we would call in modern terms an open Fair relationship. Um, I don't know how much each of them wanted the other person to be involved with other people. Fair enough. But the story of the summer of 1816 is now very famous, uh, but each telling of the story is a bit different. Hmm. But here's the basic premise. Mary and Percy Shelley, Jane Claremont, who's Mary's half-sister, mm-hmm. Lord Byron, and John... What? Yes. I love Lord Byron. <laughs> he was... He is something. Let me... That man is cuckoo he was, he was not the best. Not cuckoo, but like... Um, he, he, he's smart. <laughs> But he was not the best um, in his personal relationships. Yeah, he's crazy. He was not the best at sticking around and owning up to his responsibilities. He was like a free Sometimes spirit. when his responsi- even when his responsibilities are um, a human that has half of his DNA. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he's nuts. <laughs> yes. So funny to read about. And I'm realizing I don't know how to say this other man's last name. John Polidori, Polidori. Polidori, right? Is it Polidori? I feel like I've heard Polidori. That's sounding somewhat familiar. I that guess feels like it would wrong. be from a children's nursery rhyme, Polidori. M- maybe it is, but I feel like I've heard the term Polidori. No, I definitely have too, but... Multiple Dory fishes is his name. I can't type. So they, they had a summer of love. Probably. Um, <laughs> so, yes, Mary and Percy Shelley, Jane Claremont, Lord Byron, and John Polidori went on a trip to Switzerland. A little friend's getaway. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, a intellectually pretentious friend's getaway, which sounds like, honestly... I was about to say, wait a minute, that kind of sounds fun. Let's do it. <laughs> what if we took, like, a weekend trip somewhere and we just took a bunch of books with us and, and like... Just, like, read them. And like talked about them, <laughs> and we wore like, oh yeah, absolutely. Can we wear the little caps and the um, like? We could wear our graduation robes, <laughs> so we could actually get some use out of those expensive things that we purchased. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I was gonna say we wear the like dark academia garb yeah. the whole time, maybe Harry Potter robe style. Yes. Each one of us could represent a house. Who else are we inviting? I don't know. As of now, we have us two of Penelope and, and Bo. So yeah, there we go. I'm good. I'm good. That sounds great to me. We'll take along the coloring page of Penelope She's Garcia. She's definitely a... Uh, Hufflepuff. Yep, Hufflepuff. You're definitely Ravenclaw. No. Really? Mm-hmm. You're, You're Slytherin. Ravenclaw. I'm not Slytherin. No, I'm... That actually would have been my last choice. Really? I definitely think I have... A mix of all of them except for sure. Hufflepuff. Okay, I, Hufflepuff would be my like last choice for you. Zero percent Hufflepuff. Like I was definitely like Ravenclaw, <laughs> Sly- Slytherin. I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie. I guess that's and, fair. <laughs> you know, the one thing that makes me this is 
because I have had this discussion with other people, and I was not convinced that I was a Gryffindor until I've had some other people, okay, like really be like, no, you are, and explain okay. it to me. The one thing that I like cannot leave alone is injustices. Mm, Godric Gryffindor. And I just want to like I, and I'm always looking for adrenaline. Yeah. Well, then, then yeah. there you go. Now I see it. Ravenclaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt for you. Just in and out. Ra I bleed blue. Ravenclaw. <laughs> I bleed blue. Oh my gosh. Anyways. That's if you haven't why. seen Harry Potter, you should uh, check this it out. This is quite the tangent. It's a great movie. Great books. This is quite the books tangent. Books are better than the movies. You're both good. Then go check out Pottermore and find your Potter house. Uh, Potter? I don't think Pottermore exists anymore. Does it not? I don't know. I have not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Well, Pick yeah. your house. I don't care. It's been a while. I just, I actually didn't read them till high school, so I um, just like reverted. I don't to think high I school. read them till high school, but whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're gonna go on a so they're in summer of love pretentious yep. trip, just like they did. We're not going on a summer of love though. But I would <laughs> just like. I realized that those got lumped I together. I did not even think about that implication. I was <laughs> saying Summer of Love while you were like, we're going to go. And I was like, I just want to establish go. this. Let's go. <laughs> no. If you want to knock yourself out, I will not be doing that. Oh. <laughs> I'm using the royal you. I also, thought you were talking to me. I was you. like, are you putting that offer out there for me? No. Okay. I, I don't have to put the offer out there. You can find your own offers. No, I'm ne not in never mind. Your life. Never mind. That's... <laughs> Not what I thought was going on. Just leave it alone for now. <laughs> so they're on their summer of love trip, I suppose. I don't know how to recover from this. But anyway, they're finding that it is, um, for quite a bit of the time that they are there, the weather is not very great. Mm. There's been a lot of rain, a lot of thunderstorms, which just sets a lovely mood for this story. Yeah. Um, but one rainy day, they decided to entertain themselves by reading German ghost stories. Love it. Already. Love them. Great vacation. Brothers Grimm. No, I'm so saying. Lord Byron suggested that why, why should they stop at reading? <laughs> they should each write their own ghost story. I freaking love this. This sounds like something our... Yes. Um, yes. You know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> And I'm ready to do it. The like group now. of students <laughs> at our school, at the college we went to, yeah. would absolutely do this. Now, this is when Mary wrote the beginnings of Frankenstein. Huh. It was originally just a short story at this time, but she then expanded it um, with the encouragement of Percy, Aww, her supportive. husband, but not really husband, Percy. Um, and then it became... Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, whichever title you want to give it. I like the modern Prometheus better. To I do be too. Fair. I kind of do too. Just makes it so much more like dramatic. <clears throat> yeah, but everyone everyone agreed that Mary's was the best story out of the group, um, and Frankenstein was published anonymously in 1818, and it was a great success. Although she never really had a ton of financial success um, in her lifetime, it was there was often struggles financially but it was it was a great success and a lot of people actually thought that percy wrote it because he wrote like the introduction hmm. um, but it was later obviously obviously later right. published under her name she didn't start with by a lady like jane austen <laughs> no no she didn't but that would have been awesome um, but then things start to get bad again hmm. later that year uh, mary shelley's half-sister fanny imlay committed suicide oh. by overdose of what I forget. It was something I didn't, I hadn't heard of before. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I guess it you. is what the 1800s. Laudanum, an alcoholic solution containing morphine, oh. prepared from opium, and formerly used as a narcotic painkiller. Huh. So she was. She took too many painkillers. Yes, but it was a liquid. Liquid form. That's what it sounds like. Hmm. Tincture. Um. Well, yeah. That's tragic. So. Contains almost all of the opium alkaloids, including morphine and codeine. So she, yeah. Yikes. That is what, that is how Fanny committed suicide. And then shortly after that, Percy Shelley's wife, Harriet, who was pregnant at the time, also committed suicide by walking into a lake or a river and drowning herself, which is very difficult to do. So I assume she did not know how to swim. 
Now, I haven't read her suicide note in full. Apparently it is out there. Um, but from the bits that I've read about it and the quotes I've seen, she basically said that he had deprived her of her happiness and that he was at fault for her suicide. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he kind of I mean, swept it under the rug. And, well, and like, I mean, I guess he kind of was. Yeah, probably. Uh-huh. I would Poor honey. like be depressed if, that, if all uh, of that yeah. happened to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Depression usually happens when home records are involved. That's not always true. Many times. Depression can have well, environmental saying, yeah. environmental causes. It can. There are many consequences to home records, let's just put it that way. Yeah, and he was he was treating her worse and worse leading mm. up to the suicide. Um, so it wasn't just sleeping it with wasn't, Mary. No, he was like wanting her to pay his debts and like he would like knowing that she that he was with Mary he'd go up to her and be like I need some money mm. it's just like no like <laughs> things like that mm, that's um sad. yeah so there was obviously a lead up to it sure um but of course that freed them up to get married so Convenient. after Harriet committed suicide Mary and Percy got married in 1816 within 2 weeks of Harriet's death Oh, they wild. did Gosh not sakes. wait. Mm-hmm. And their marriage was, um, there was somewhere I read that they said it was, um, quote, riddled with adultery and heartache. So it was not an easy marriage. They're like the toxic relationship of like that one girl and guy that keep getting back together all the time. Well, they're not, but they're not like. But they don't ever separate. They just have people on the side and they both hate it, but they just keep doing it. And there's just so I, like, much... have a couple from my high school experience <laughs> that I'm thinking of right now. Like, right Every, I'm sure everyone does. Um, but they... Yeah, and there's just so much trauma and tragedy that surrounds their relationship mm. from beginning to end. That's fair. Yeah. Even outside of their own decisions. Very much within their own decisions and also very much outside of their right. own decisions. Um, unfortunately, then, two more of their children died. Oh, my um, gosh. Some of them, like, right after birth and then... Um, I believe there was one that died a little older. Um, and only Percy Florence Shelley lived until adulthood huh. out of the children that they had. I'm sorry, it's another Percy. But he doesn't really come back in until the end. Um, what about William, their first kid? Does he die? I believe he was one of the ones who died. But also this is well, very confusing because some of them, right. multi- like there are people in the story who change their names. Like it's... <laughs> of course they do. Yes. It's... Point is, That's someone why, named Percy Florence Shelley survives he's the, it all. He's the, one who he's the only one that we're going to care about adulthood. for the sake of this story. It, well, <laughs> interesting wording there, Maddie. But he's, yeah, he's the one that is going to come back into the story. Okay. Um, July 8th, 1822. Mary Shelley's husband, Percy, drowned while sailing at the age of 29, making her a widow at the age of 24. So everything leading up to this has happened before Shelley was 24, before Mary Shelley was 24. Jeez. So he had been returning home, um, and his there was like this random storm cell that popped up, and he unfortunately drowned. Aww. His friends cremated his body on the beach, um, but for some reason, his heart did not burn. One of his friends, I wish y'all could see Maddie's face, one of his friends, took the heart and Lee, Hunt, to Shelley, didn't he? Lee Hunt, grabbed the heart before it burned. But his body wasn't found until 10 days after he drowned. So there were 10 days between him dying and, and his him. body being burnt. Wow. So he would have been heavily decomposed by then, especially in, the, in those warm mm-hmm. Italian waters in the middle of summer. Mm. Um, and they said that he was only recognizable by his clothing. Wow. So it doesn't make sense that his heart would be in decent yeah. condition. Before I get to the like the biggest reason that people think this is, the only other possibility that I can think of is like if saponification occurred for some mm. like, for some reason. Um, are you familiar with that at all? Isn't I think I know what it is. It's like um, it's something where like I feel like there's bubbles. I can involved. explain it. Let's just explain so it. So basically, the short layman's version of it is it's um when this when a body is decomposing usually in a warm 
wet mm-hmm. environment, um, something called adipocere mm-hmm. forms, which is a wax-like substance that can slow or stop decomposition. Got it. But I haven't seen any evidence that that occurred. Fair. I feel like his friends would have said something because it looks really weird mm. and it would have been odd. And I yeah. honestly, off the top of my head, don't know how long that takes. Fair. And I don't think that it would happen if he's being like thrown around by the waves and stuff, I think I, I might be wrong on this. I don't have enough knowledge of, mm-hmm. for, of like <laughs> forensic science, sure. um, but I think it usually happens in like stagnant waters, okay. that kind of thing. So I don't think that that's what happened. Um, the prevailing account is that the fire did actually reach his heart, um, but it didn't burn because Percy Shelley suffered from aortic calcification, oh. which is yeah. basically a calcium buildup in the heart valves yeah. um, that can, that may have made it into a bone-like yeah. structure. Um, and this was possibly due to um, a previous case of tuberculosis that hmm. he had had. Interesting. Um, but here's the best part. Okay. Eventually, like you predicted, his heart did make its way to Mary, who is said to have carried or carried it around with her for years. Oh my gosh. At some point, she wrapped it in silk and her late husband's poetry, and then she put it in a drawer with some locks of hair of her dead children. I'm not, la- I'm not laughing because it's know, funny. I know. I'm laughing because I don't have another reaction. Nobody knew about this like spooky drawer until Shelly died approximately 30 years later and her, when her son found it, like going through her belongings after she died. Imagine just finding, you see the locks of, your, uh, locks of hair from your dead siblings and then you see something wrapped in paper. It's your, fa- your dead father's poetry. You unwrap that, underneath that is silk. You unwrap that, and it's your dead father's calcified heart that didn't burn when, he was, when his body was incinerated. It, I'm not surprised at all that Mary Shelley has a spooky drawer. No. Why? I mean, I feel like if I was Percy, I'd be like, all right, mom, like, of course you had this. <laughs> But you still, you probably wouldn't. Be I mean, happy I still would it. be like, oh my god, this is my father's what just heart. Happened? It, I, yeah, I know. It'd be one of those in like a movie where they pick it up and then they go, Whoa, and then they, they drop, drop it. it. Yeah, it's like rolling, and you're like, stop, ah! stop. <laughs> There's Percy. No, no, <laughs> old Percy. Maybe I made that too graphic for you guys, <laughs> but it's not too graphic for me. I mean, I well, yes, we, but that like, is true. I, I I'm just imagining people listening to this early in the morning and they're just like yeah how about that for maddie your work day commute <laughs> it's just too early for this <laughs> but i'm good i'm good all right and word. then the heart was eventually buried buried the heart was eventually buried with percy florence shelley right. the son that was a really good sound i'm not sure what that was but it was just like i tried to play it off <laughs> sorry guys it was just like a your like mouth? my lips got yep, stuck yep. together or something. <laughs> so the heart was eventually buried with Percy Florence Shelley, okay. a son, um, when he died in 1889. That was just kind of a little time skip there. But after, after um, Percy, her husband, died, um, she wrote, she continued to write several mm-hmm. more novels um, and other works, and she worked hard to preserve her husband's name mm. in the literary world. She educated their son. Um, And then he graduated college in 1841. I don't have it written down. I believe it was Trinity uh, Trinity College. And then he got married in 1848. And Mary lived with them until she died from a brain tumor on February 1st, 1851 in London. And that is the very short version of Mary Shelley's tragic and absolutely metal life. Yeah, I'd say metal. So I found an email that, um, because... Like I told you, I led a discussion on this in college. Right. And then one of my friends who was a year behind me, and she happened to be leading discussion oh. on um, on Mary Shelley and Frankenstein in that same class that I took. So I sent her my notes and I sent her the like, here's all the crazy stuff that happened if you want to talk about it. And I just, I just kind of started there because I was like, oh, I just want to refresh my memory. Mm-hmm. And I just think that this, the last sentence that I wrote on the email needs to be read. Okay. It was the TLDR for the email and it is absolutely the TLDR for this podcast. 
TLDR, Mary Shelley was metal AF and I respect her for it, but also, yikes. Also, my search history regarding Percy Shelley's death is probably the reason the FBI won't hire me. There's a lot in there about saltwater decomposition. Oops. <laughs> That's such a Rachel and then, <laughs> email to send. Like, what? And then apparently she read that email out loud in class. <laughs> Ye- also, <laughs> yikes. I told, I mean, I was like, use whatever you want. So she took that <laughs> she very did. literally. Actually, I w- I should just say it was Lauren. It was Lauren, guys. It was Lauren. I don't know why I was like, I shouldn't say her name because I just wasn't thinking about that because we were avoiding names of like the school and yeah. professors and stuff. Well, sh- shout out to Lauren. <laughs> we, we, we miss you, I guess. Uh, I miss emailing you things about, <laughs> about you, Mary you know Shelley. How, like, we roomed together in college. You know how often she would just walk in on me like researching for the podcast and would just be like, corpses <laughs> it doesn't surprise me whenever i walk into our studio rachel's always like don't look it's like hovering over a computer and then there'll be i'm always preparing something there will be sometimes where i walk by and it's like rachel's looking there's dead bodies again who knows what she's it has looking not at happened that often who knows what she's looking what, at when did that happen or it's you? like crime junkie like serial crimes criminology stuff sometimes i it have happens. to i i want you to grab that notebook right there the, flower, the one the, with flowers yes, on the it. One with flowers I'm on terrified it. of this. No, I want you to. I want you to. Open I think it. you've shown me this. I want you to take a peek. I made a TikTok about it a while ago. So her flower so notebook is gorgeous. It has gold leaf on it. Well, f- probably fake gold leaf. You and think I'm cheap? It's full of psychopathy, sociopathy, 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 sociopathy. murder, and assault. Her tabs are murder. Serial murder, psychopathy, and sociopathy. Psycho- psychopathy and sociopathy. Sociopathy and psychopathy. Would you like to read some excerpts? I don't even remember what's in there. The FBI defines serial killing <laughs> as a series I had to memorize of that. two or more murders committed as separate events, <laughs> usually, but not always, Oops. by an offender acting alone. Okay. All right. We've been doing this long enough. So do you have a, a reaction? You've told us what the tabs are and what, how it's a pretty notebook, but this is, how did we, how did we even get to this? How did we end up here? I don't remember. Just talking about me doing weird stuff? No, we were talking about Lauren and then. Yeah. You were saying walking in on me doing weird stuff on the computer. Oh, I don't right. think, I don't think I've shown that. I don't think I've had that many weird things up on our, up on my computer here. Well, and to be fair, I guess I haven't been in the studio much. Yeah. I really am only here when we record. Yeah. I'm other designated I, work times. Sometimes Rachel's I. Rachel's here a lot. Sometimes I forget that this exists and it kind of, is it bad that this notebook makes me happy? No. I never threw away anything from this class, but this doesn't have all my notes in it. So Rachel. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for telling us the abridged version of You're Mary welcome. Shelley and for giving us a little teaser into her life because now You're I am... You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'm actually inspired to go reread Frankenstein, believe it or not. And of course, I would like to do more, even an even deeper dive I'm very excited Mary about Shelley. you wanting to read Frankenstein. This might have to be our first um, studio mate book club. Studi- <laughs> Co-host? That's the word I was looking I was looking for co-host, but we went with studio mate. Ah, say la vie. Book club. Um, book club. If anyone wants to join the Frankenstein book club, apparently that's going to start. Stop. How fun would that be if we had a book club with Stay our Stay tuned to our social medias because we're going to start a book club like soon. Just let us coordinate all of this and then it's going to happen because I actually want to do this. Please. So... Get reading, in order, in order to hear our socials, well, we should probably First of all, let's start reading Frankenstein so you can be prepared. Make sure you read the introductions. I have, I Bro. already have discussion questions. Oh, good. This is going to be great. In fact, I have... We'll, we'll do it on TikTok Live or something. I have 11 discussion questions. Instagram Live. <laughs> so in order to find details on the book club, you'll need to access our socials. Yes, but before we say that... Okay. Don't forget, if you write a review during July... And send us a screenshot of your review and your address. We will send you a free HyperFocus sticker. But yes, in order to contact us and to hear about the book club, you will need to get on our socials. Please continue. So. So. Here they are. Here they are. Instagram. HyperFocus pod. TikTok. HyperFocus pod. Twitter. HyperFocus underscore pod. YouTube and Facebook. HyperFocus colon, a podcast for chaotic minds. And don't forget to join the Facebook group so you can discuss 
chat with, with us buddies. and other listeners. And then lastly, the email. Hyperfocuscast at gmail.com. So hyperfocus, C-A-S-T dot com. Y-M-C-A. Sorry, I just felt like spelling. Um, so. <laughs> no, that, that crossed my mind too. <laughs> okay, great. Did. Okay, good. So that's, is that, is that all we have for him today? What else? <laughs> I love when I say that because she gets so triggered. She's like, what do you mean that's all? I can read, I can read more of the murder notebook. No, no one needs that. I think. Okay. We'll see you next week, guys. I'm going to turn this off before uh, you guys have to hear more about brutal murders and Rachel's obsession with criminology. Um, yeah, you we'll catch you next week. between a blitz attack and a surprise attack? Would you like to? No. <laughs> And I don't think they do either. I th- disagree with that. Maybe I'll have to do a solo episode where I just directly read my notebooks. I feel like it might do well with us with a Rachel's certain gonna have subset. Have her own book reading. <laughs> her <laughs> notebook subset reading subset of our audience, literally just reading my notes from that class verbatim. What a time we have here at Hyperfocus. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Maybe look out for that mi- that episode. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that'll be ne- next week's episode. Next week. <laughs> Perhaps. In the meantime, stay chaotic, babes. <laughs>